Hi guys and welcome back to The Wargamer and in this video we are going to be talking about probably the most commonly used and important tool that The Wargamer has and that is the Humble Paintbrush. But buying your paintbrushes can be a bit of a nightmare. You often find there's lots of different ranges, lots of different types and brands and it's really difficult to know which one is the best for you. And in this video you will hopefully get a better understanding of what you can use for different categories depending on what type of painter you are. Now, I'm not going to be talking about things like uh, flat brushes for dry brushing or large brushes to vehicles or detail brushes. That's something I'm, it's better suited for an actual tutorial than a vlog style video like this. But in this video, I'm going to be talking about three categories that I've defined for paintbrushes, and that is budget, mid-range, and top tier. Now, these aren't concrete categories. There are some brushes which fall in both, but it's a really easy way to describe uh, what the brushes are often best used for. So first category we have is the budget brush and it's pretty much what you what it sounds like. These are the cheapest brushes available but they're also the most readily available brushes as well. You can pick these up from stationers, um, from art shops, uh, eBay, they're very easy to get hold of and often people will be using these brushes when they first begin the hobby because it's just the brushes they will find when they go to an art shop to buy something. Um, they often are cheap and they often are pretty good as well, but you will find that life, the lifespan of these brushes isn't very good. They'll often fray, they'll often lose their points very quickly, even when you're kind of taking care of them. So the kind of base, they're, they're very good for people who maybe just starting out and don't want to invest too much into the hobby straight away, or if you don't do enough painting that your brushes won't really be deteriorating fast enough to warrant getting a more expensive brand. Now they're also good if you're using some of the, the mid-range or top tier brushes if you want to do something which is going to be quite damaging to your brushes, for example using things like glue and um, sometimes textured paints and things like that, things which are going to be um, eat away at those bristles and you don't want to use an expensive brush for. So pretty much everyone can have a use from a budget brush and these are also the most easily to get hold of. This brings us to our next category, now the mid-range brush is where you actually start to see more named brands coming uh, into the, into play here, especially wargaming brands. Now, the Army Painter and the Citadel range of regular brushes uh, fall distinctly in this category. They're kind of a little bit more expensive than the budget brushes, but they're kind of designed for wargaming. They'll have a good range. They'll have lots of different small uh, brushes, all the way to your large brushes and dry brushes and things like that, things that are designed for the wargamer. They also tend to be a bit better quality as well. They last a little bit longer, they keep their points better, um, they don't fray as much and you won't find your bristles are falling out after exposing them to a metallic paint, for example. So these are quite good if you're um, using your painting miniatures quite a lot and you just want something you can kind of quickly get your miniatures painted up with. Um, you're painting just a tabletop standard. You don't need to worry about any uh, intricate details or anything like that. So mid-range brush is definitely the brush for you if you're just kind of a run-of-the-mill, want to get your miniatures on the table and ready for gaming. Now there are a few uh, exceptions to that rule though because both the Army Painter and Citadel also do some sable brushes which are slightly higher quality and they kind of uh, kind of straddle that border between mid-range and top tier. They are a little bit better in quality, a little bit better at holding their points but still a little bit cheaper than some of the, the, the top brands available as well. Which brings me to top tier. Now top tier is going to be distinctly the Windsor and Newton Series 7. There are other brands that kind of at this level, but I have the most experience with Windsor and Newton, so I'm going to be talking about them uh, exclusively in this level. These are the most expensive, but you'll also find that these are the best quality brushes that you'll be using for wargaming. Now, that does mean that if unless you're actually uh, looking to do some good quality highlighting or get some um, nice blends and things like that, you're probably not going to have any use for these brushes, so it's not always worth spending out that extra money. But if you are looking to do that, it's definitely worth investing in some of those more expensive brushes because you're going to be getting better quality, um, contr better control from your brushes because the points are a lot better. And also things like um, the Windsor & Newton brushes have really nice reservoirs. Now, if you're not sure what I mean by a reservoir, basically when you're painting um, with Windsor & Newton brushes, you'll find that they actually have quite a long um, bristles, but only a very, very fine point. And this is great because it means you can get that really nice uh, controlled detail, but you can load up the bristles with paint, which means that you will have to less go, uh, do less dipping from your palette to your miniature, to your palette to your miniature. It also stops the paint from drying out as quickly in the bristles as well. However, if you do decide to invest in a Windsor & Newton brush or a similar kind of expensive level brush, really do get some brush cleaner. I can't stress that enough. Get some um, Masters brush cleaner. I'll include the links in the description for it. 
I've been using it for, for a long time now and it's great for increasing the duration and longevity of your brushes. I will find myself uh, after every few paints just giving them a quick rinse in the, the brush cleaner and then rinsing them out and they're good as new. It just stops paint from building up. Another thing I would stress is don't use metallic paints with your expensive brushes because metallic paints have a tendency to eat away at bristles and I would probably maybe stick to your budget brushes or your mid-range brushes if you want to do metallics because it, they just really damage your, your expensive brushes. So keep them away, uh, keep metallic paints away from your expensive brushes and they should last a lot longer. Now this video has been very quick. It's just a quick rundown on the three types of brushes you can use, some examples for each one. And hopefully you have a little bit better understanding on what you should go for. So. Uh, personally, I use a mixture of mid-range and top-tier brushes as well. So I use uh, Army Painter range and also uh, Winsor & Newton. Now I use three Winsor & Newton brushes. Um, I've just got them, let's grab them here. So these come in, in these really nice little tubes that you can see here. Now I've got a, uh, a 0, 0, a 0 and a 1. Now they're sizes. And I think my 0 is a miniature brush and you can just about see it here. So you can see it's got a nice little stubby point there. Now the miniature actually refers to the fact that the bristles are miniature, not that it's designed for miniatures, but these brushes really are fantastic for miniature painting. Uh, and I use them in pretty much all my tutorials now. You'll, have, you'll see these being used if I'm painting anything but metallics. If I'm painting metallics or doing things like varnishing or basing or dry brushing, then you'll find that I'll use my army painter brushes instead. Or if I'm doing techniques which I feel like I'm doing kind of rough edge highlighting, I'll use my army painter range. But these really are great brushes. Um, as you can see, I've actually kept them in their original packaging. That's how much I'm looking after these brushes, making sure they don't fall apart and break on me. So yeah, I'll include some links in the description below to my the Wins and Newton brushes I use myself. So if you want to pick up some of those, you can do, as well as the brush cleaner. Again, can't stress to get that brush cleaner enough. It really is fantastic. And yeah, hopefully you have a better understanding of which paintbrushes to use. Uh, yeah, that kind of brings us to the end of the video. Um, you guys seem to like my last little vlog that I did. I'm hoping to do more of these and kind of uh, tackle subjects which don't require a tutorial where you're just looking at my hands painting in miniature, but maybe talking about more kind of generalized concepts in war games. So if you have any suggestions for these videos, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And uh, also, I mentioned it in my last video, we have the War Gamer. Uh, the War Gamers, sorry, which is the Facebook group for anyone who likes these videos, wants to share their work with other people. Um, and I'm thinking of maybe doing some kind of a showcase of miniatures that people have shared on, the, on that group. And if they want to see them in one of these videos, I'll probably do like some screen grabs and show some of the, the work that I've liked for maybe the last week or so. So if you're interested in that, then head on over. I'll include links in the description. Uh, feel free to join, share your work, uh, discuss with other people the wargaming hobby. So uh, all that's left to say is thanks for watching. And goodbye.